welcome everyone on behalf of the Zero Project Impact Transfer Team um, to our session today. We're very pleased and honored to have you with us. Um, my name is Loïc Van Kutsem. I indeed, as Sima mentioned, I work for Ashoka. Um, and I have the privilege of leading our Zero Project Impact Transfer Program with SO Foundation Zero Project, Fondation Descoubreme, and many other partners. Um, for those who cannot see me, I'm a white male in my 40s. I'm wearing a light blue shirt, a dark blue suit, and um, turning gray. Um, a couple quick words on Ashoka, perhaps. We are a global NGO um, supporting change makers and social entrepreneurs. So people who develop innovative solutions um, to achieve system change, to improve systems for the better. Um, we support over 4,000 of these change makers uh, in, in over 80 countries. Um, and our, our baseline is very much everyone a change maker. So we believe in the necessity to empower everyone to become an agent of change. With the incredible support of ESSO Foundation and the Scoubrumet Foundation and other partners, we indeed help each year 10 Zero Project awardees to clarify their replication strategy and to connect with potential partners um, aiming to replicate these proven solutions in new contexts. So how can we replicate what works rather than, than reinvent the wheel? Throughout this session, you will learn more on the program. We will hear some testimonials from mentors, program partners. Um, you will discover the 10 projects that are participating this year. And we will end the session with a panel discussion on what it takes to replicate and to scale and what have we learned so far. I'm delighted to be joined by some special guests today. I have with me here in the studio um, our dear colleague from Zero Project, Sumita Kunashakaran. Hello, Sumita. Hi, nice to be here. Nice to have you with us. And Stefan Dertig. Hello. My right, who's um, Great to be here. A, a, a passionate supporter of many different impact projects and a very loyal mentor in our program since its, its very beginning. Um, so pleased to have you both with us. Uh, we will also have, uh, as remote guests, joining us a bit later, Esgul Bayar Hilgen from the Sabanshi Foundation, um, who is one of our program partners as well as Julian Tarbox uh, from Enable India, who has participated in our program previously and will be sharing his experience and what he learned replicating his solution in new countries. Um, so, Sumita, would you like to say a couple words uh, and introduce the upcoming video? Sure. Um, so, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sumita, and despite only having recently joined the, the Zero Project and the Impact Transfer community, I have been absolutely taken by the innovativeness and the vision of the Impact Transfer awardees. Um, speaking of which, um, here are the 10 awardees. Um, we have Jamba from Bulgaria. We have I Love Coffee from South Africa. We have PFDA from Bangladesh. Um, Deaf Talk from Pakistan. Youth for Jobs from India. Um, My Ability from Austria. Enable India from India. Helm from Egypt. Seco Chile from Chile, and lastly we have Egalite from Brazil. Um, and here's a very quick video kind of um, wrapping up and discussing more about the amazing work that these documentaries, uh, sorry, that these projects do. Jumbo Career for All supports people with disabilities to attain key competences, soft and professional skills. As a follow-up step, our team supports them to start work by connecting them with employers. Our team has developed an accessible and innovative online infrastructure translated into four languages. On the one hand, it is an e-learning platform, and on the other hand, it is a job matching board. We use coffee to break the communication barrier between the hearing and the deaf, and we do this by training deaf baristas, chefs, and placing them in our corporate cafes. To have the desired impact, our strategy for growth and development is first to distill and document our existing operational methodology, processes, and training, 
That requires funding and the right partners with a view that we will scale locally within a year and internationally within three. AFD Vocational and Training Center is a registered non-profit social welfare organization. This provides learning opportunities and promotes methods to empower persons with autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, intellectual and other disorders so that they can utilize their competencies, build skills and take part in mainstream employment. We are relentlessly putting our best efforts to develop and sustain a strong platform for them to be an asset, not a liability. Deftalk is first online sign language interpretation services. It is available on a mobile application, which is on both iOS and Android platform. It's a marketplace where deaf users connect with certified sign language interpreter on just one click via video calling solution. We would love to become a Google translator for the deaf community. For that, we are seeking partnership with multiple stakeholders across the globe with mobile network operators and for the deaf people organizations to acquire the user base and uh, onboard sign language interpreters. We have a mobile app which can easily integrate it to the other countries to empower the deaf community. Youth for Jobs has an innovative product called the Smart Inclusion Centers. They help increase enrollment of students with disabilities in higher education and increase their employment in good companies. These are set up in educational institutions and colleges through our College Connect program. In the last two and a half years, we have oriented educators about disabilities and taught them technologies which help improve learning outcomes. Working with 500 plus companies, we've trained and placed in jobs about 1,085 youth with disabilities. The program tries to solve two important problems. First, the unemployment rate of young academics with disabilities is relatively high. Second, companies are desperately seeking for future talents but struggle with the issue of disability. The well-designed program solves these two problems independently where and it doesn't matter which kind of company, which kind of disability. For our next step, we wish to build a strategic partnership. This partner should already have access to stable networks with our local stakeholders and support us in making our program known to the target groups. Our work at Enable India impacts across 14 disabilities and in order to amplify this impact we are working on creating a livelihood ecosystem for persons with disability with the population mindset. Uh, in this large scheme of things one of our key strategic priorities is to scale digital literacy for persons with vision impairment because I personally believe computers rise for visually impaired and uh, having access to digital literacy opens up opportunities for persons with vision impairment that otherwise not possible. Therefore, replicating our iTool is our priority and we are looking at making this iTool available across the globe but at least to start with uh, in the countries where there is huge population of persons with vision impairment. Our 360 solution helps employers to better include persons with disabilities in the workplace. We provide three pillars, training, recruitment, and accessibility. And we do so by providing employers 
the opportunity to create job analysis reports in order to better understand how each job would fit for persons with disabilities. We also help employers understand how accessible their workplace is through creating an assessment tool that enables us to do this process in the most efficient and productive way. The essential elements of our innovations are promote car washing without using water, protect a natural resource such as water, and support the integration and labor inclusion of people with disabilities. We like to find a company with an international presence or an entrepreneur who wants to replicate and finance this innovative and sustainable service to develop it in any major city in the world where there are so many cars and many people with disabilities waiting for a decent job. We developed a recruitment platform specifically for people with disabilities. Our platform is totally accessible for different kinds of disabilities and we have a behavioral profile test where we are able to match the candidate with the right job opportunity, focus on their potential and not their disability. Our solution is different because we have a totally scalable technology. We started our company in the south of Brazil and we saw that it was important to create impact all over a continental country. So we developed a technology with an algorithm that we are able to match the right candidate with each job opportunity everywhere in Brazil and why not everywhere in the world. Welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the 10 projects that we are supporting this year with the Impact Transfer Program. Um, they have been working the last six months to clarify their solution, how to package it, how to make it easy for other actors in other contexts to adapt and adopt these innovations. Um, you will be able to hear more on these solutions uh, later on today in Channel 2 at uh, 1 o'clock Vienna time. And at four o'clock Vienna time, they will be presenting live their solutions, their replication strategy. And uh, I encourage all of you to join and see how you can benefit from these solutions and uh, connect them, partner up. Um, Stefan, before we move on and look at our next documentary, uh, which covers the program a bit more generally with uh, different testimonials and partners and alumni. Um, you've been involved in this program since its very beginning as a, as a passionate mentor, providing a lot of time and energy to support these projects. How would you describe this program in one word? And one word. why would you choose that word, maybe? One word? Life-changing. It's two words, I think. But I would choose it because it really influenced my life. Maybe I can tell you about this later. Sure. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. We'll look forward to hearing about that in a minute. And we'll transition to our next video, uh, which is an overview of the program. We can describe Zero Project Impact Transfer Program with one word, and that word is support. We defined Zero Project Impact Transfer Program as a global accelerator program for us. If I could sum up the program in one word, it would be enlightening. That's how the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program helps organizations to replicate and transfer their social impact and innovations in other countries and contexts, with many success stories to tell. With the support of the program Enable, India's mobile phone-based information sharing service, Enable Vani, replicated to Ethiopia and Mauritius and Greta und Stark's mobile app Greta, providing captioning and audio description 
In cinema spread their innovation from Germany to 30 countries across Europe, Latin America, Africa and Asia. Our goal is actually to uh, support innovators to internationalize and globalize their ideas um, uh, so that many, many persons with disabilities have an advantage of them. So it's all about rather than reinventing new social innovations, seeing which innovations have evidence that they work and seeing how we can transfer not necessarily the organization but its impact. From the hundreds of nominations for the annual Zero Project Award, the most replicable initiatives are selected to participate in this high potential program. Impact transfer is a powerful concept that seeks to highlight the transfer of providing solutions with high social impact. All led to one thing clearly, that's about opening up uh, you know, possibilities. Uh, possibilities that I never thought that they exist or possibilities that I have taken, uh, you know, took them for granted. This program is simply brilliant. While great business ideas tend to go global quickly to serve clients and customers around the world, important social innovations all too often remain local or national. Well, different elements to that, I think. One is that the initial motivation of the founders of the social innovation are not necessarily as oriented towards international scaling as a typical business would be. Another element is that in terms of mindset, perhaps, uh, they're often more from a social sector, do not necessar necessarily have the tools and the expertise and the skills to think about how to scale a model. Um, and I think the overall, the infrastructure, the ecosystem is developing quickly, but not mature enough yet to really scale all those solutions. That's where the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program steps in. Back in 2017, uh, I joined uh, forces together with Ashoka, a uh, global acting uh, social entrepreneur, and my goal was to implement the idea of the Ashoka globalizing uh, system into uh, our uh, community uh, and to support the most important and innovative practices. Impact Transfer is an Ashoka initiative. Uh, we do this in different fields and with different types of organizations. Worldwide, 3,700 social entrepreneurs in over 80 countries receive financial and non-financial support by Ashoka to scale the impact of their innovation. With the Zero Project community, we bring in partners who can help replicate these solutions, large NGOs, foundations, um, public actors, uh, and we try to create also this supporting ecosystem or infrastructure. The goal of the program is to help proven social innovations to spread, a goal that is supported by Fundación Descubreme, the non-profit organization that fosters the construction of an inclusive culture in Chile, joined Zero Project and Ashoka as a partner in 2018 to make the impact transfer program visible in the Spanish community. Most Spanish-speaking countries count with few financial support programs and low resources available, making a difficult panorama for the inclusion of people with disabilities. The feasibility of knowing what is happening in other countries is very difficult. Therefore, our purpose is bringing the knowledge, the human resources, the expertise and the financial support to our region Since 2018, every year, 10 projects are selected from among the many nominations for the Zero Project Awards. We apply additional criteria uh, to select the projects. Criteria are long uh, in terms of to which extent is this strategic to them, um, to which extent is it a mature solution with evidence of impact, so sufficient evidence that it works. Um, to which extent does it seem replicable? 
is it adaptable, is it documented, can it be replicated? And um, to which extent are there any experience working with partners and open to somehow let go of their work and collaborate with others? If these requirements are met, the selected projects go through a structured six-month program to prepare for international replication and clarify their impact transfer strategy with five online webinar training sessions on social entrepreneurship, impact modeling, business modeling, replication strategies and financing strategies. This year the topic is inclusive employment. So obviously they're all working in very complementary ways on the topic of inclusive employment. Um, they come from very different geographies and continents. So there's a lot of diversity within the group from a geographic perspective. Um, and they all have complementary approaches. We hope to receive a critical external assessment of our planned project. Through professional input on scaling strategies and related topics, we receive important tools and instructions to be able to make upcoming decisions. It has helped us to find where we should improve our business model and find the formula to finally achieve a replicable and a perfect business model as clear and concrete as possible to be able to offer it in any country in the world. My experience with impact transfer is that it has required a lot of critical thinking, which hasn't been easy. But now that we fully understand the root of the problem we're trying to solve and our desired impact, our future looks a lot brighter and clearer. And it's a roller coaster ride. We learn a lot, and definitely it's an eye opener. Having on the ground support from DPOs, NGOs, and subject matter experts who already have access to persons with disabilities and the market in each of the respective countries. That would enable us to grow faster as well as develop better strategies to tackle the issues that each country faces. Connecting with others in the same space allows us to find ways to work together and even complement services. We truly believe that all these will help us move forward in a sustainable way so we can achieve an even bigger impact and positive results. The learning opportunity provided by the impact transfer through the resources materials, presentations, mentoring, interaction with other organizations has firmly developed an insight within me on how an innovation could be transformed into a scale-up opportunity. The best thing about being part of impact transfer program is to uh, have access to the mentors like Susan. She's absolutely brilliant. Always constantly pushing us to think beyond what we see today as a current reality. So they are actually helping us to think, uh, I mean, bring the future to the present and visualize the replication. Working hands on to develop a business model with revenue projections sharpens our thinking. Mentors too have been very involved in the discussion. We do think the Smart Inclusion Center, which we'd like to replicate, will now be a reality. It has been an amazing experience. Very challenging because it makes us go out of our comfort zone, but at the same time, very rewarding because we can see very fast results. While the transfer path for this year's participants has only just begun, Previous participants have built on contacts made through the program to take forward replication in new countries around the world. One of them is the Motion City Lab at Gallaudet University in Washington DC with its storybook application that provides a bilingual reading experience through high quality storytelling in both sign language and printed text. We invite
invited Melissa and the Galuda University to our local in, local philanthropy seminar in Turkey. We introduced them to a local NGO, Association of People with Hearing Impairment of Turkey, and they exchanged know-how. With the collaboration they started, they applied to our grant program. We are currently supporting the project. In this way, we managed to replicate a successful model of the Impact Transfer program. With this and many other success stories, the Zero Project Impact Transfer program shows the powerful effect of joining forces and its high potential for a barrier-free world in the future. We now have almost 41 alumni who are all active in the field of inclusion somehow so uh, it will be very interesting to see how we can continue working with them and perhaps foster more collaboration and more collective impact with our alumni as well in addition to continuing the program uh, in different geographies. There are also opportunities of course to support the impact transfer community at first to support us finding the best innovative uh, solutions, uh, to act as a pro bono mentor or to act as a replication partner in financing uh, one or the other implementation. Uh, but on the other hand, there could be also an opportunity like Descubreme to concentrate on a uh, other region we have not uh, found so far and uh, to do this work uh, for the big uh, Zero Project community. Welcome back to the studio here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I find it very exciting to see the different perspectives uh, and, and also the success stories. And we'll be hearing more um, from, from program partners and, and some success stories in a, in a minute. We're going to transition now to a panel discussion uh, for the remaining part of this session. Uh, so we have a good, a good 20 minutes for that. And um, I would like to, again, I have Stefan Dertnik uh, next to me here in the studio. I would like to welcome now our two remote guests. Um, we have first Aizgul Bayar Hilgen from uh, Sabanshi Foundation. Hello, Aizgul. Hello, hi. Hi, Hello. welcome. Great to have you with us. So you're based in Turkey and you have replicated or supported some of our project alumni to explore the opportunities in Turkey and some of them have indeed replicated in Turkey. So we look forward to hearing a bit more on your, your experience in a minute. Um, and I'd like to welcome as well Julian Tarbox, um, who's a program manager at Enable India. Um, Julian was part of our program two, three years ago uh, with their Enable Vani solution which, and I think he has very exciting news uh, to share with us a bit later, um, because this solution has been replicated in the meanwhile. Enable India is again participating this year in our program uh, with their iTool solution. And yeah, Julian, very happy to see you again. You're based in Mauritius. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Thank you, Lark. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Great, okay, well, Julian, I'd, I'd love to start with you. Um, Again, as an alumni of this program, um, could you perhaps share with us what your experience with this program was, how you benefited, um, or what you've learned? Hi, good morning, Loic. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so I think the main uh, thing for us uh, around uh, Zero Project was around gaining access to, to contacts uh, and to, to uh, uh, support and mentors. Um, I, I think Zero Project was not what we expected. I, I, I think we expected to get connected to tons and tons of funders and lots of money. Uh, and what we got was actually so much more. Um, we got connected to, to funders, uh, to uh, contacts, to stakeholders who were able to help us uh, replicate in the different countries. Um, so we've been successful in replicating in uh, Ethiopia. Um, and uh, we're very proud to report that uh, that has just launched uh, uh, just over a week ago. Uh, so we're feeling very, uh, very uh, elated, uh, very happy. That was able to happen because we were able to make connections uh, through Zero Project. 
Uh, and it wasn't necessarily um, uh, people we met directly at Zero Project. It was people we met at Zero Project who had friends, who knew people, uh, and we got connected after the, after the conference. Uh, and I think maybe the other big thing that I'll just mention will be the ongoing mentoring and support uh, has been really important for us because it has been a really, really long journey. Um, uh, we didn't uh, replicate in the months after Zero Project. It's it's taken uh, it's taken a good few years to to really uh, to really get going. So, uh, big thank you to everyone at uh, Zero Project for all the connections. Thank you, Julian, and we look forward to hearing a bit more later on on your experience indeed replicating your your solution um, in Ethiopia. And uh, very happy to see that the hairdressers seem to be open in Mauritius. <laughs> Um, you look, you look great. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll come back to you in a minute. I school. Um, I'd like to then turn to you. And um, again, you work for the Sabanshi Foundation in Turkey, extremely active uh, in this field, and you um, are part of this program also since the beginning. Can you share with us? And we've heard your, Nevgul, your general manager, explaining a bit during the video. Um, but can you? Again, maybe um, reiterate a bit what your role is within this program and why, why you decide to partner with such a program. Why is it interesting for you? Of course. Thank you, Loic. And it's a pleasure to be with everyone. Uh, our experience with Zero Projects have always been very stimulating and mind-opening, so I'm sure these days will be the same. Um, so as a Sabancı Foundation, we are a local part participant of Zero Projects since 2013 and uh, a partner of uh, impact transfer program since 2018 and uh, we had immediately had a crash on the program uh, as uh, since we have seen the program there are several reasons to it uh, from a funder uh, side um, actually as Sabancı Foundation we are a grant making organization and disability is one of our uh, focus areas uh, apart from gender equality and participation of the youth and the um, area of disability do not attract much funds in this sector. So in Turkey, we often observe that NGOs working in the area are more focused on um, survival and um, fundraising than creating innovative solutions and thinking on you know, innovative solutions. And also, um, there are some barriers of language and mobility. Uh, so it's not very easy for disability rights NGOs to participate to conferences such as Zero Project. So um, as a funder, uh, we always had this sub agenda, this mission of uh, creating bridges um, uh, between the local uh, associations and the ones we have met in Zero Project, but it requires a huge amount of work. Uh, so, Impact Transfer Program actually offered a very systematic approach to it. So, when we met uh, the program, we directly jumped right in. Um, so, we have uh, we have been organizing our traditional philanthropy seminars on technologies for life without barriers uh, during the past years, uh, where we invite assistive technologies from all over the world, and uh, as well as Impact Transfer Program alumni. Um, so, uh, as Melissa mentioned, uh, they were here as well in Turkey, as uh, well as, for example, Greta and Stark. Um, so, we've introduced them to local associations, and um, this is how it all began. And it's uh, from a founder's side, it's very interesting, but from um, the side of the uh, social enterprises, it's also a great, great opportunity to. Um, to enhance their capacities on uh, pitching, finances, modeling, scaling, uh, and in communicating impact. This is also very um, a huge need in Turkey. Thank you, Eskul. And it's indeed really important and crucial to have partners like yourself, like Sabanshin Foundation and many others, um, kind of supporting this program. Because obviously, uh, once these projects are ready to replicate, they need support to better understand geographies, to find the right partners, to understand the rules of the system, etc. So we'll be hearing a bit more on that later on as well. Thank you. Um, I'm turning now to my right here to, to Stefan, uh, who's in the studio with me. Um, Stefan, you were mentioning earlier that this program was life changing for you. Can you elaborate maybe a bit more? How did your life change? <laughs> yes, my life significantly changed. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Um, if I think about this program, and I had the honor to be from the start a mentor here. If I think about this program and there come three words immediately to my mind. One is joy, 
one is energy and one is family. I worked 25 years as a management consultant before, and the most thing people, our, my, my customers were looking for was for purpose. When I came here to the Zero Conference uh, and met the participants, purpose was the only thing they were not missing. Uh, this is all people with disabilities, they have children with disabilities, or they have disabilities in their family, in their friends, and instead of looking away, they actually turn disabilities into abilities. And that gives them the joy. If you see the smile in the face of the people you help, you support, you, you bring further, you help develop further, that gives them the joy. But as a group here coming together, this gives all of us a lot of energy. And that's what you need when you're a startup founder, you, you, you go through ups and downs. And the energy which is in this group is just amazing. And finally, coming to family, I would like to tell you a story what happened to me here two years ago and what, what's going on now. So I met actually the father of a, of a daughter, of a nine-year-old daughter with autism, and he showed me his MVP, Minimal Viable Product. Uh, he had a, neuro, a mobile neurofeedback for children with autism. Two years later, um, this is now in the process of medical certification, as all the VEG signs are. And it's a tough process. And in the next two months, we have actually will have this, this medical certification. Uh, we had had two financing rounds, so there is enough money around to really develop the product further. And instead of being stuck at children with autism, we now have also adults with autism. We also have applied the same method and tool for ADHS and other neurological Im impairments. And I'm still with this, I'm still pushing this, this founder, and I'm still helping this founder to be really successful. And I think that's what I mean with family. Here you meet a network of people who help each other and who push each other further in order to be su successful to help others. Thank you, Stefan. That was my experience. Thank you, wow, joy, energy, family, that's indeed, I think not only for this program, but for the overall Zero Project community, a very good way to describe what we all experience here. Um, thank you, so we're, we're talking a lot, obviously, today about impact transfer, so how to transfer, replicate, and scale the impact of social innovations, and in particular innovations in the field of inclusion and disability. Um, at, at Ashoka, we like to look at this from a systems change perspective. So we, we really support and believe strongly um, in, in ideas and people that um, aim to change systems for better. Um, and people like Caroline Casey and many others in the Zero Project community are such examples of what we call Ashoka Fellows, who are really passionate and will never stop to try to shift systems. Now, changing a system is not an easy task. Um, it obviously requires time. Um, it requires to understand the system deeply. So understand the barriers, the leverage points, the rules, the resources in the system. Um, it often requires to create coalitions, to work in networks, to mobilize different actors and stakeholders. And um, it often combines various approaches. Um, replicating an innovation is one of different pathways to achieve system change. Um, in addition, you often need to do advocacy or policy influence. Um, you might need to create a movement, a campaign. You need to change behaviors and mindsets. So it's an extremely complicated uh, journey, um, but that's the one we all aim for. Um, we will focus the discussion now on the replicating and transfer part. Um, and I'd like to turn back to you, Julian. Um, you've been, indeed, since now probably at least two years, um, working on replicating your, your Enable Vani solution. You just explained to us that um, this was officially announced a couple of days ago. Um, what, can you share a bit more your experience? Uh, what did it take? What did you learn? What, were, what are the success factors or maybe the barriers also that you were facing there? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks, Loic. Uh, I think one of the biggest uh, challenges uh, for us was really around uh, being able to get on the ground to uh, countries where we wanted to replicate and being able to find the right partners uh, who were willing to take the time. Um, so 
it took a lot of uh, a lot of patience, uh, a lot of perseverance. Um, emails being sent, waiting weeks for replies, uh, meetings, waiting uh, weeks and months for follow-ups. Um, really, uh, a, a really lengthy, lengthy uh, process. But I, I think more important than the patience and perseverance was just around uh, finding a partner who shared our values and could also share in our vision. Um, we did talk to a lot of people in, uh, in many different countries and we were asked to do things and change things and uh, change cost structures, uh, all sorts of different things. And uh, we have to keep coming back to the vision that we're trying to create, the impact that we're trying to create uh, and understand whether the changes that we're uh, being asked to do are in line with that vision and in line with those values. Um, so I guess I would try and summarize uh, my uh, advice around success and challenges to be, uh, to be patient, to be perseverant, uh, to, be, uh, to persevere, um, to be flexible and be willing to make changes and, and throw out everything that you've created and, and, and start again. But also you've got to make sure that you're not sacrificing your vision and not sacrificing the impact uh, that, that you're wanting to create for uh, persons with disability. Um, and I, I think we've uh, learned to create uh, a team working across multiple locations. We've got uh, people working on this project in, in India, uh, Mauritius, Ethiopia. Uh, I was in Australia previously. Um, and we've had to learn how to work across international borders, across time zones. That can be quite uh, painful, getting up at midnight for a meeting. Um, uh, so perseverance, patience, uh, but never sacrificing your values um, and always making sure that you really understand who your stakeholders are. Um, and I think for Ethiopia, we were very lucky to have uh, a very talented person by the name of Sri Lakshmi, who was uh, a big supporter of Enable India in India, and she happened to move to Ethiopia. Um, and so we were able to leverage her support, and she's, uh, she's been fantastic uh, for this project. Thank you, Julian. Thanks for sharing that. So we've heard, yes, patience, flexibility, perseverance, finding the right local partners, and, and, and and ensuring the alignment around values uh, and, and, and the envision. Um, thank you very much. Um, it's good if I can turn maybe to you and, and, and hear your perspectives on this topic and perhaps you can bring this more from your, your role in the ecosystem as a grant making and funding uh, institution. We've heard from Julian how, how lengthy these processes can be. Um, what does that mean for funders like yourselves? Do you look at, how do you look at such projects and what, what are for you the key? ingredients for success? <laughs> okay, of course. Um, so we leave each Zero Project conference uh, with huge enthusiasm, actually. Uh, we can't really choose among the impact transfer alumni uh, which one to replicate. They're all wonderful. Um, but we have to be realistic about our capacity to replicate, so we have to choose. So um, in this sense, uh, I think we made a smart move as a grant-making institution. Um, we have integrated the collaboration of, uh, for example, Galileo University and uh, Association of People with Hearing Impairment um, within our grant program. So in our grant program, we have this um, condition of applying with a partner. Uh, this is because we value exchange of know-how and intersectionality. So um, that's the way to foster that. So uh, we encourage them to um, actually apply to our grant program as partners. And um, this was a way of uh, replicating the model in Turkey for us. So it didn't require uh, much more human resources uh, for us as a funder. Um, so um, we always look at, after coming back from, after meeting the impact transfer alumni, we always look at our grantees uh, to see um, which one can be a replication partner because we already have a relationship and trust based there. Um, and also, uh, we try to see a bit further than that. And um, while deciding, uh, we 
we, we try to see how far it can go uh, state-wise, if, if the state would like to adopt that model, for instance. So uh, we might choose models that we can advocate uh, as well. Um, and uh, also, most importantly, um, a tip for funders, maybe um, scaling impact is not an issue of one year, of course. So it comes within some years, so it should be a long-term uh, dedication. Uh, and um, by experience, we have seen that um, the, as a bridge, as an institution that bridges these partners, um, we have to be often very involved in order to clarify the expectations of both sides, because language can sometimes also be a barrier. Um, so yeah, follow-up, uh, advocacy, and um, long-term partnership. Thank you, it's cool. And indeed, at Ashoka, we're doing a lot of work on you know, how to finance systems change. And as you mentioned, it's cool. it does require a different perspective uh, from funders as well. And definitely um, the timing perspective, uh, the time horizon is one of the dimensions, but also being much more flexible in the way you partner with your grantees, right? And uh, acknowledging that this cannot be achieved in one day. And as was mentioned by Julian and by yourself earlier, um, it's a journey and things will need to change and adapt. So offering this flexibility and this support to grantees seems really important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Stefan, you've been, you mentioned it, management consulting and supporting both for-profit and a lot of non-profit organizations in their replication and scaling journey. What are your key mm -hmm. takeaways? Or I, I remember when, when Loic asked me first, why should you scale? I had a simple answer, which was, why should you not scale? Because coming from the corporate world, imagine somebody produces mobile phones, why he would not sell the mobile phones in the next country, right? So it doesn't even come to their mind not to do that. On the other hand, my learning of the last four years was, uh, it's not that easy if you scale a social entrepreneurship, a uh, social uh, company. Why? I would see three things which are really key. One is, make sure your model works at home. And it's easy to say, but honestly, the ones I've met, it was very often at the beginning not even clear why does it work at home. And the technology somehow somehow didn't 100% work, right? So if you scale somewhere else and, and you're not really clear what you're doing or why, uh, why you're successful or, or it looks like successful, uh, it's probably too early. Make sure you understand that as a basis. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, it's not that easy. Like we Austrians always say, Austria 8 million people, Germany 80. So we, of course we go to Germany 10 times as much sales. Right? It's not that easy. Even within Austria, people move, parents with uh, children with autism, for example, move 15 kilometers within Austria because the other county has a different way of financing, helping, support. So that's if, even within a small country like Austria, very, very different. So please make sure when you scale, have a good mix between opportunity and analytics. Right? So opportunity means you meet somebody maybe here at the, at the Zero Conference and people invite you, why don't you come to Turkey? But please make sure that you understand how the Turkish ecosystem works, how the, how the financing works and all these things. At the end, the, the, the users, the people with disabilities might have the same problem. But each society, because of tradition, has started to solve this differently. So make sure that you have a strong partner. And that's why it's so great to meet people like you here at the Zero Conference uh, that really can help you to translate your value proposition, what you are doing in your home country, into the country where you want to move. And the third, like in a startup, the team is the most important. If you invest, you always look at the team. And please also don't neglect this. Even if somebody helps you and tell you what is the ecosystem in Turkey or in Germany or in Austria, wherever, please don't neglect that you have to select people who really make it happen on the ground. And that is equally important as, as the team probably which you have selected in your home country which helped you to grow things. Right? And here you can make a lot of mistakes and that will really slow down the process by a, a huge amount of time. So taking the right decisions there is critical for me to be successful. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, and thank you as well, Esgul and, and Julian, for being with us remotely today and sharing your, your insights and your perspectives. Um, 
just mindful of time, we're moving towards the end of the session already. Um, I will, um, I can recommend um, all of you to have a look at the Zero Project Almanac, um, which includes um, a similar but more in-depth conversation on, on scaling and replication with um, actually the same, the same people as well. So you can discover more there. Um, and um, I will remind you that uh, there's an opportunity to join and learn more from the 10 impact transfer projects. They will be presenting live later today at one o'clock Austria time and four o'clock Austria time. So join, get inspired, um, explore how you can benefit from these proven solutions, how you can support them perhaps. And thank you very much for being with us in this session. Uh, I wish you all a fantastic, inspiring conference and look forward to seeing you later on. And we'll close with um, a last very short one minute video from um, the CEO of Ashoka, the organization I work for. Um, his name is Bill Drayton, and he uh, would like to address some words to the whole Zero Project community. Thank you very much to the guests. Thank you very much for the attendees, and see you soon. Hi, I'm Bill Drayton from Ashoka. Everyone, a change maker. First, immediately, let me thank everyone who's at the Zero Project conference. You are representing half of humankind when you add families who are very directly affected to the 10% with disability. And it's not just health, it's human rights, it's dignity. It's the right to pers the pursuit of happiness. It's so important, thank you. And I think I speak for all of us in thanking Mark Martin Nessel is a very close friend. He's built a major part of Ashoka, the globalizer. We're working together to bring some of the world's most strong social entrepreneurs for disability to work together, think together, to add an element of, a further element of strength to the movement. 